Design tips to make your app look good. It's important to take care when designing your app. You want it to be intuitive and easy to use. That's commonly referred to as user experience design or UX. But you also want it to be pretty and enjoyable, so much so that the user actually finds it delightful to use. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the design of the app. But in all cases, you must be careful. It can be tempting to overdo the design, to over-engineer it, to try to create delight. If your design actually gets in the way of the functionality, then no matter how pretty it is, your users will become frustrated and your app is worse off for it. In this lecture, we'll discuss some of the easiest and simplest ways to quickly improve the design of your app. The first thing we'll discuss are some easy ways that you can incorporate animation into your app. Then we'll talk about the importance of coloring your navigation bar. Once you decide to incorporate color into your app, which colors should you use? We'll discuss a little bit about that and how you can pick matching color palettes. Next, we'll talk about why you should customize UI kit and not use default UI kit things like table view cells. And finally, we'll talk about hats. We did cover many UI kit animation topics in an earlier lecture, so I encourage you to refer back to that. That lecture covers things like transform based animations, constraint based animations, and UI kit dynamics. But here are some simple tips to keep in mind when constructing any kind of animation for your app. A general rule of thumb is to keep your animations below one second, and generally prefer maybe around one quarter of a second the average length for your animation. You never want to block user interaction for the sake of an animation. It might look really pretty, but if I have to see that animation more than once and it takes more than a second, I'm going to get really annoyed if I can't click the buttons I want to click while the animation is happening. Because UI table views are among the most common way to display information in iOS, the easiest way to incorporate animation into your app is by animating table view cells as they are inserted or deleted into table views. Thankfully, Apple provides some very easy ways to incorporate animation into UI table views. You can see the six UI table view modification methods that also incorporate animation listed here. You can insert, delete, or reload whole sections of a UI table view with animations. Similarly, you can insert, delete, or reload individual rows in a UI table view. UIKit provides various ways to animate the changes, including fade, move in from right, left, top, or bottom, appear from the middle, and even an automatic mode that tries to figure out the best animation based on the modification that's taking place. Now let's take a look at a demo app that uses these UI table view animations to great effect all with one line of code. In this case, we're using reload sections with row animation. The animation style depends on the button that's tapped. When the top left hand button is tapped, the cells animate from the left. When the middle button is tapped, they animate from the middle. And when the right button is tapped, they animate in from the right. Again, all that is done with one line of code, so there's really no excuse to not include UI table view animations in your app when it's appropriate to do so. Next, let's talk about the importance of coloring your navigation bar. This is maybe the number one thing you can do to distinguish your app from others by adopting a signature color and including it in various places in your app, but most importantly, in your navigation bar. This is Evernote. It won the 2013 Apple Design Award. There are some things that make it great, in my opinion, like interesting typography, easily understood navigation, and the most obvious thing at first glance, the integration of the brand color in the navigation bar. There's also some things that are not so great, in my opinion. I think Evernote overdoes the use of the brand color. Take a look at the screenshot on the right. I find it hard to distinguish anything in that sea of green. This is Pano Perfect. It won the 2014 Apple Design Award. I like how the interface is simple and focuses on the content. The design is good, but is understated to allow the most important thing, the panoramic photos constructed and shared within the app to really be the focal point. I also like the incorporation of a nice dark gray color in the top tab bar. We'll talk about why dark gray is good in a bit. And finally, of course, you can't help but notice the integration of the brand's blue color in the navigation bar. This UI isn't so different from Makestagram, which you've already made. And this won an Apple Design Award. 
It just goes to show that good design is within reach of all developers and that simplicity is often the key. I'd like to take this opportunity now to show you how easy it is to color your navigation bar completely in Storyboard and without touching a line of code so that you can do it for your app. First, I'm going to create a new single view application. I'm naming it Color Navbar. I'll run it so that we can see what an empty application looks like. While it's compiling, I'll open up main.storyboard so we can see what's in there. The app has compiled and the simulator has opened. Not so surprisingly, our empty application looks empty. I'm going to delete the default view controller and replace it with a navigation controller. The navigation controller also comes with a root table view controller. To make sure we see something when the application launches, I'm going to specify the navigation controller as the initial view controller. Now when we run the app, we see a nice empty table view with the title root view controller and some space for our navigation bar at the top. Now let's color the navigation bar. In the document outline panel on the left, I'm going to click the navigation bar item in the root navigation controller. Now, making sure that I have the attributes inspector panel open on the right, I'm going to set the bar tint option at the top. I'll choose this nice blue that I have in my recent colors palette. Now when I run it, we can see the navigation bar is in fact tinted with the selected blue. However, the black title text really doesn't work so well with the blue. In general, unless the navigation bar tint is very light, white text will look better than black text. So I will now change the title color attribute to white. When we run it, we see that we have succeeded, except the status bar at the very top still has black text. The mismatch between the black text of the status bar and the white text of the navigation bar is not good, so let's fix it. Right above where we set the navigation bar tint, there's an option to set the style. Setting the style to black will make the status bar text white. Now there's one final thing left to do. As the user segues between the interfaces, the navigation bar automatically generates back buttons. Unfortunately, as we shall see, the default color does not work with our navigation bar color. To test this, I'm going to set the table view cells to static so that we can implement them in storyboard instead of code. I'm going to create a segue from when the topmost cell is clicked to a blank view controller. Now when we run the app, we see that the generated back button has a blue color by default. We should make it white to match the rest of our top bar text. When we click the navigation bar object in the document outline panel, we see that there is a section labeled View in the Attributes Inspector on the right. Changing the tint in that section to white will fix our generated navigation bar buttons. Now that you know how to change the navigation bar color, the obvious question arises. How do you know what color you should choose as your app's primary color? If you find yourself lost in a sea of colors, then I have good news. You can choose one of these eight colors recommended by Apple. These colors are actually listed in Apple's human interface guidelines as recommended. That's not to say you can't use any other colors. In fact, if you're able to decide on a different one, you probably should. But if you find color picking to be difficult, feel free to go with one of these. They're listed here with their RGB values. One thing to notice is that these colors are all fairly light. I would recommend a light color over a dark color for your app's primary color, as a dark color can feel heavy and oppressive and wouldn't necessarily match the aesthetic of the rest of the operating system. Here are some tips that apply generally to most forms of design. In most cases, you should avoid pure black. Pure black is something rarely encountered in nature, black holes being a major exception. But here on Earth, most colors you see and may perceive as black are actually dark gray. Even when you shut your eyes, you're still seeing a dark gray or even a mid-gray. As an experiment, try shutting your eyes. You might think this to be black, but now, with your eyes remaining shut, cover each eye with the meaty part of the palm of each of your hands. Notice how much darker everything became. This may be the closest thing to pure black you will see naturally, 
but you will notice that you might start to see dancing patterns as your brain tries to make up for lack of sensory input. In any case, because pure black is not something we commonly perceive, it probably doesn't belong in your app. The background of the slides in this video are not pure black, they're 10% gray. If for some reason you would like to use pure blacks, you may want to avoid placing purely white things, like text for example, on top of them. Contrast is good for legibility, but extreme contrast is not natural and can fatigue your users. Let's take a look at some examples from Android Lollipop. Lollipop is designed using the increasingly popular material design language from Google. First, look at the dark themed UI on the left. Notice how, with the exception of the status bar at the top and the navigation bar at the bottom, the background colors are all shades of gray. The nav and status bars are pure black for good reason. They're actually intended to blend in with the black bezel of the phone so that they look more like the hardware buttons that these software buttons replaced. Also notice how, while the title text for settings and permissions may be pure white, the body text of the permission is not. Similarly, look at the light theme UI on the right. There are no purely white backgrounds, and the color of the body text in the permission box is gray instead of pure black. Let's take a look at one of my favorite color tools. Adobe Color CC can be found at color.adobe.com. This tool is a great way to construct a palette of primary and secondary colors that you can use in your app. You can specify the primary color, which is in the center of the palette. Then you can use one of six algorithms to generate related colors. The results vary based on the input, but I find analogous, compound, and shades tend to produce the best results. You can also use the custom setting to create your own palette. It's very helpful to see the colors side by side. It's much more difficult to know whether they'll harmonize nicely without a tool like this. Here I'll demonstrate the quick creation of a custom palette by just dragging the color selector around the color wheel and stopping once I find a color that I think harmonizes nicely with the one before it. In addition to the creation tool, Adobe Color CC has another great feature, the ability to share your color palettes with everyone else. You can sort palettes by different properties. In this case, these are the most popular. I find many of them to be very beautiful and entirely deserving of their popularity. Now let's move on from color and talk about UIKit. UIKit is great because it does much of the work of constructing a user interface for us. However, the default UIKit objects are often very bland. This is an intentional move on Apple's part, as they don't want to be too suggestive with their default settings. Because the default UIKit objects are very bland, it's best to avoid leaving the default settings. For one thing, the default UI table view cell is only 44 points high. Apple recommends a minimum of 40 by 40 points for any touchable area. That means that the default UI table view cells are only four points higher than the minimum touchable size. Default UI table view cells are difficult to touch and don't result in a great user experience. It's for that reason that I recommend you make your cells chunky and easy to touch. Go for somewhere between 60 to 80 points in height. You will also almost always want to use custom UI table view cells so that you can provide custom behaviors or contextual information to your users depending on the functionality of your app. The more contextual information you can provide in your cell without overcluttering the interface, the better it will be for your users. We will see more about this later. Here are two examples of chunky UI table view cells from iOS. On the left is the App Store top grossing charts. In each cell is a rank, an icon, a title, a category, a rating, and a purchase button. It's approaching cluttered, though it can be argued that it's not quite there yet. All of that contextual information is there to help the user decide if they want to download an app or not. For many users, this information, particularly the icon and rating, may be enough to convince them to download without having to look at screenshots or reviews. On the right is the photo album. The thumbnail provides the user with important contextual information. 
With just a date or album title name, the user would probably have a hard time remembering which photos are where. But with the thumbnail, the user's memory is jump-started so that they can recognize each album quickly. In both cases, the cells are large and easy to click. Let's talk about hats. When making an app by yourself, you should be wearing many hats. You have to be a designer, developer, product manager, marketer, and QA engineer all in one. It can often be very difficult to recognize each of these roles as being discrete, but it's important to do so for the success of your app, because if you focus too much in any one role, your app will suffer because of the lack of attention given to other areas. When you're wearing your designer hat, you must be willing to forget about what you know as a developer. Designers aren't aware of limitations. They don't limit themselves only to the user interface elements from UIKit, because maybe they don't know exactly what comes with UIKit. But more importantly, they're willing to design a new user interface component when necessary to improve the user experience. As a developer, that might mean more work to develop a custom user interface component. But if the result is a better user experience, then that is what should happen. As part of their learning process, designers seek inspiration from other designers. Maybe that means they go on Behance or Dribbble to see what other designers are doing. It's important to be exposed to many ideas so that you may become more flexible in the future. When wearing your designer hat, you should wireframe on pencil and paper or get fancy and use a tool like Sketch. You should not design in Storyboard because then you will find yourself limited by the set of included UIKit components. You should draw the app as you want it to exist without worrying about the implementation. That is, until you put on your developer hat. You should be careful though. There are no limitations, but the more familiar an app feels, the easier it is for the user to become acquainted with it. If you issue UIKit completely and design custom interfaces for everything, maybe your design is better. But if the users don't feel like the interface is familiar enough to start using right away, they will leave and never come back. Once you put on your developer hat, you should implement what you designed, even if it requires making custom UI. Doing this, you will grow as both a designer and a developer. Let's look at a case study. For this demo, I took a very simple notes app, constructed entirely with stock UIKit components, and implemented some of the suggestions given in this lecture. The UI changes were completed very quickly, in the space of 30 to 45 minutes. This is the home screen. There are a list of notes with titles and a plus button to create a new note. The left screen shows stock UI table view cells with a default color navigation bar. On the right, we can see some changes. The app has been given a signature color and that color was used to color the nav bar. In this case, I chose yellow, whether either because of sticky notes or yellow memo pads, I associate yellow with notes. The navigation and status bar text were made white to match the yellow. The UI table view cells were made much larger and easier to touch. In addition to providing the title, they now also provide contextual information about the note, making it much easier for the user to remember the contents of the note without having to click it. I also chose to use a serif typeface instead of the system default Helvetica. When you click or create a note, you are taken to an interface to edit the note. We can see similar changes here, a colored navigation bar and back button, a non-default typeface, and more white space. In this lecture, we covered some simple design tips to improve your app. They included using one-line method calls to animate UI table view cells, coloring the nav bar, how to choose colors, the importance of changing the default values of UIKit components, and how to wear different hats as you work on your project. I hope I have demonstrated that with some very simple changes, you can rapidly improve the design and polish of your app.